Hello, this is Brian Foster. A welcome November 4th evening at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific to everyone. Welcome to our broadcast. Again, let me remind you, we are on every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, all the way to 4 p.m. Pacific time zone in between and all around the world. I also uh, record all these live streaming on the Kardec Radio Facebook page. And I put them on my YouTube site, which you can go to my YouTube site by going to my my um, blog on nwspiritism.com. And you look on the right-hand side, the navigation bar, and you'll see either join my YouTube or my BitChute uh, site. So I would recommend BitChute, too, for everyone. It's, very, it's a more reliable uh, service than YouTube. You never know who YouTube will censor. So... We will, you know, we'll hopefully keep putting these programs wherever people can see them. And we are here to talk about Spiritism, another night on Spiritism. Now, also, before I start, we are live on Kardec Radio Facebook page. Please, everyone, tell your friends on about Kardec Radio Facebook page. Tell your friends about Kardec Radio. We are also broadcasting live on Kardec Radio. Kardec Radio is 24 hours a day on all sorts of different, wonderful Card uh, Spiritist, lit uh, Spiritist radio programs by many great people that are talking, giving us information. And you can download those that program on your uh, Apple phone or your Android phone. Just go to your App Store or Play Store and type in Kardec Radio, K-A-R-D-E-C, Kardec Radio, and here is Alan Kardec right here, Alan Kardec, and you can download that program on your radio. It seems like we're having more and more people every month that that listen to our program. I'm seeing uh, quite a few people start listening to Kardec Radio, so that is wonderful. It's one oh, there's Barry. Hello, Barry. Oh, you're welcome. I've been answering Barry's questions again. Anyone who has questions on Spiritism, you can contact me on my on my. Uh, blog site nwspiritism.com and hit the contact me and then ask me a question and i'll start going back and forth on email i have quite a few people that do that and i am happy to help anyone with spiritism uh, dania hello how are you so we're having people starting to join that's wonderful what we are talking about tonight uh is spiritism and in i'm carrying on with talking about my book, How to Live, Inner Peace Through Spiritism. Now, How to Live was, was inspired by a poem that was given by Andre Luis, the spirit Andre Luis, to uh, Chico Xavier, and it had 24 verses. And what we've, we've talked about before is the poem, the first five verses were this, trust in God and in yourself, in serene conscience, time spent on productive matters, a constructive speech, a prayer allied to work, and now we are in hope and action. So you can see these are very short verses. And in fact, when I read this, and then I read the, the commentary about what did this poem mean by uh, Herculano Pieres, he said this would be uh, a good one to talk about. This is the, the technology of living, or something like that. I, I don't know if I have that right. I thought, you know, that would be good. As, you know, these are very short. Hope and action was one one of the verses of the poem. What does a spirit world mean by hope in action? And that's why I'm, I'm, I wrote this book. And of course, you can find this book, How to Live, Inner Peace Through Spiritism, on my website, Amazon. Uh, also, and my website, you can go on the right-hand navigation page. You can, you can uh, scroll down and you'll see a click right to Amazon Kindle or Amazon Paperback Book. It's available in both. So, what do we mean by hope in action? And, and so the phrase in hope in action could be described in various ways. At its most basic level, it implies forward movement with faith in future results, right? It is, it, you kind of see it as a picture of a cavalry charge, lancers or armored knights, valiantly attacking a position with certainty of victory. It is what all of us has longed for, a purpose, a goal beyond ourselves, an exalted resolution to achieve greatness for the benefit of all mankind. 
And don't, didn't all of you feel, you know, as you were teenagers and, and young that you wanted something that would actually be, you know, higher than higher than you, right? It was very important. Well, what many of us don't realize is this is exactly why we are on earth. It is the attainment of spiritual victory for ourselves and humankind. We have this grand this this grand task this this wonderful goal and it's it's for it's not only just for each person to serve as an example of goodness over a wasteful life which can be a, you know when you do that you're a shining beacon which lights the path to ascendance for others and it's also it's also for yourself it's for yourself to create victory because as you go higher and higher in each life when you come back to the earth or any other planet, you are again a better example and you are helping others ascend, even just by being yourself, just by being charitable, kind, faith, you know, a, a shoulder to cry on, et cetera, right? All those things. And for a lot of people here on this earth, you know, there are a lot of these, these people who are very successful in life and many of these small victories by people go unnoticed, the spirits tell us that all the time, that really some of the most important people who have been on the earth are people you've never heard of. So the, you know, the good, a lot of the good people are lost in the commercial atmosphere of publicizing outlandish and destructive behavior. But this is only on the surface. So don't be disheartened by that. Patterns of thought from upright and civilized citizens serve to combat the pull of gross materialism and absolute selfish actions from the elites of the world. And I'm not trying to say all of them are like that, but it seems like our culture is, you know, amplifies when we see this outlandish, selfish behavior that is just, you know, is more concerned with your material goods and your, your pride than anything else. A little bit of that's fine, right? I'm not telling anybody to go and be a saint or go to a cave, but we need to balance everything. And therefore, for anyone seeking a better way, these, you know, when when all this, all of us little people, all those people who are below the radar, and we are, you know, we are have patterns of thought that are good and constructive and filled with hope, right? These ways of loving emotions with bolstering from our spirit benefactors serves the support and spur on many people striving for improvement. It is there. It's in there. It's the background of the ether. Remember what I've said before, our thoughts, we are like radio towers, right? Everything we think, and this is a little bit scary for people, right? Everything we think goes out. You know, we are like these cell phone radio towers. Everything we think goes out. And this is, so you can think of the human race, 7 billion of us, everyone just pushing out their thoughts. And their thoughts are coming through us too. We, we, those thoughts permeate ourselves, right? That's why you see crowds. And that's why you see people who hang around with people who are depressed or down. They kind of get depressed or down. People who, who, you know, conjugate with people who are happy and positive, they become happy and positive. This is one of the reasons, not just visual cues. I'm sure that that is part of it too, but it's also cues from thoughts coming through and in our, in our subconscious, we, we, end, we end up picking that up. And as more and more people, you know, live life as it should be with, you know, faith, charity, kindness, justice, a slow and gradual change will start to occur. More and more people shall be incarnated on earth to reinforce the rational and good-hearted souls. And as this tide of people rises up, almost imperceptibly, people on the fence will be swept along and they will be given examples to follow. This is the slow motion charge of hope. Each of us are in the troop of valiant brothers and sisters. We are not in this for one, but for many lifetimes. Each new existence on earth brings us one more step closer. So the question is, how do we become a member of this regiment of light? How, well, what do we do? How do I join the charge? Well, first, we must prepare ourselves. To prepare ourselves, we must awaken. We must rise from our slumber and look around and see 
who and what we are in the society around us. The spirit Joanna Downs tells us about the importance of being awake. This is what she says, and she is so wise. Humankind in general lives in a sleep state, in, in lethargy, and that is why people suffer the worst sickness possible, ignorance of themselves, their destiny, and the meaning of their existence. Comfortable with the situation, people may complain, but they do almost nothing to change society ills, ills that are often characteristics of themselves as well. Due to their masochistic need to inspire pity, they bemoan themselves. Let me stop right here for a second. Haven't we seen that? Don't we see in this culture right now, this whole victimhood Olympics? Everyone wants to be a victim. It does nothing. And she's telling us, you know, you know, years ago when she wrote the book, this is this leads to nothing. So, and this is what she says it leads to. They yield to circumstances out of self-indulgence and make no real effort to overcome any obstacle that may pose a threat or hindrance to their progress. Why haven't we seen that? She goes on. Unconsciousness prevails in the modern world because it gives into immediate gratification with no follow-up plan for attaining liberating emotions. Thus, society is divided into surreptitious, mutually hostile groups that grow further apart each day, whereas they should work together to eliminate separatist barriers and become aware of their infinite potential for self-realization and spiritual awakening. But the moment inevitably arrives when individuals are induced to either awaken or remain dead to reality. In order to awaken from their heavy sleep, they must make every effort possible to break the chains of self-pity and unhappiness, self-depreciation and self-disrespect. Being awake means self-fulfillment. Being awake of one's inner reality and the infinite possibilities for growth that are within one's reach. It means freeing oneself from the fears that keeps one immobilized in uselessness, rediscovering the joys of living and acting, broadening one's communication with nature and all living beings, multiplying the means of human dignification and making them available to everyone, and submitting oneself to the eloquent purpose of enlightenment found everywhere. Now, isn't that amazing? I mean, you can that describes us today. That probably could describe many different cultures at, at different times, but it seems very relevant today. And when she said, "Break the change of self pity," doesn't that describe the cult of victimization, which pervades our culture? Everywhere one looks, groups are decrying their victim status, blaming others for whatever fantasy of failure they have. The spirit Joanna is telling us to discard that as other, utter nonsense, to stop imposing censorship whereby any opposing ideas are shut down. Instead, open up and listen respectively to multiple viewpoints. We aren't made to live in a, in a safe plastic bubble. We are here on earth to become better, to mature, to be able to listen to different points of view and use our conscience and what we've learned, what we've learned of what, it, what is good and what is charitable and what is nice and how to fil filter out what we should do and shouldn't do. We need to learn how to follow our conscience. That is the divine set of laws given to us by God for everyone. And that is, that is, stays with us life after life. Our conscience improves, right? It becomes this law library where we have more, this, like we all know nothing's black and white. And spirit tells us, first of all, there's no, there's no all evil person. There's no all good person around here, right? Everyone is a combination. And so we have to learn and handle that. So when we do that, when we open ourselves up and listen and we don't, you know, yell, we don't, you know, we don't shut them off, right? We let them speak. Doing this will expose each and every one of us to be unprotected from the world. So we may, as individuals, not robots, discern for ourselves the true path to the light. The road is not through shutting down all communication and living in a closed and controlled environment. It is by living in the world. The world was fashioned to us as a campus by the spirit world, by Jesus Christ, right? This is what, you know, this is, we're here. 
And Jesus told us so much in the, in the New Testament. You know, forgive, you know, help other people. He's telling us how to survive in this world. Jesus never said that our life is going to be easy. He never said that, oh, go live your, you know, go put yourself in a closet and make sure no one ever says anything mean to you. I don't, I don't remember that that phrase in anything that was recorded, right? So, therefore, by living in this world, the planet chosen by the spirit room for us to learn and grow, right? The path to awareness is to acknowledge the limitations, the class, the race, the culture, the sex, and the age in which we live. It's all, we are incarnated at this time in our bodies, in our social positions, and how we look, all for a purpose. Each, our lesson plans have been created by the spirit world for each and every one of us, individually tailored. That is frightening to think, right? So they're individually tailored. And then as I talked before, we are all radio towers, right? The spirit world looks at our progress every time. Now, the wonderful thing is we're not here alone. All we have to do is meditate and pray, ask for guidance. We will be given guidance. And the best way to do that is to pick a same time, you know, one night a week, whatever, 30, 45, an hour, 60 minutes. Sit down, meditate, and just think about things. Think about your life and just let yourself be open. You'll start being inspired. And that's why we need to know here, right, why we are here. And then only by the realization that we are immortal, right, we are immortal spirits, are destined to travel through multiple lives, which present multiple scenarios of opportunities of growth. Then we can begin to feel comfortable with our present circumstances instead of retreating to a cloister and shutting out the world around us. So we have to think, okay, I'm in this, I'm in this mess, right? We could say I'm in this mess, right? Or I'm in this good situation, but I know it's not going to stay. Everything's dynamic, right? Nothing's ever going to be static for us because we have to learn. But we just, if we just feel ourselves, this is how, you know, this is one of the reasons I wrote the book, How to Live Inner Peace of Spiritualism. Because even when you go through bad times, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is a lesson that was given to me. What am I supposed to learn from this? I shouldn't feel sorry for myself. I shouldn't hate the person that did something terrible to me. I shouldn't, you know, run away. I'm here for a reason. And if you can figure out that reason, and I talk a lot about that is, is the problem is the solution in my book. And that is you're given these problems because most probably when you can, by the problems you are given in your life, you can go back in your and think about, okay, what did I do in my previous life? I must have needed this lesson, right? And therefore, it means the spirit world wanted you to, to modify, mold your character or remove some blemish, right? Some, some little you know, wedge of spirit of selfishness or, or false pride or whatever, or stubbornness. So think about those things. And if we can think about that, and if we do that, then it, as is, if we were sent to wait, if we, you know, if we don't listen to what's being told to us, if we don't try and learn, it is as if we were sent away to a very expensive college and all we did was cut classes, right? Our parents would have spent a fortune on us and we would have learned nothing. But on the other hand, being awake means understanding our present time and place as the launching pad for greater advancements. It means we recognize the hardships ahead, but we have faith and hope that we shall be successful because we understand that it isn't our momentarily pleasure that we seek but modification of our character. That's why we're here, is to modify our character. Now, let me go off on a tangent for one minute. You say, okay, well, I have to modify, modify my character. I have to be a better person. Why? What is that going to buy me? Well, this is where we have to understand the power of a spirit, power of a soul. A spirit is immortal. Us here on earth, we are like children in elementary school. We're not given too much responsibility and we're not allowed to do too much damage. But a spirit, a mature spirit, and of course our perfect spirit is our best example is Jesus Christ, right? He is a perfect spirit. The power he has is so immense. And you can read about that in my book, Heaven and, Heaven and Below. And I have a whole set of chapters there about 
what other spirits say, what they have seen Jesus Christ do and how he presents himself in the spirit world. The spirit, a mature spirit, has the ability to create with thought. Thought is action in the spirit world. This is why we're here to modify our character. We don't want extremely powerful people, spirits, who can just think and things happen, who aren't disciplined, who aren't wise, right? Who aren't experienced. That's why we're here. That's why we're modifying our character. So someday when we graduate from this planet and these levels of heaven above us, we can actually partake in the creation part of heaven. We can help create new worlds, new life, new, new high spirits. Now, so the spirit, Joanna, doesn't just ask us to be awake, right? Is She's also helped us tell us about how to be awake. What, you know, she said, okay, be awake, try to get some self-realization here. And she has kind of given us some guidance to this. And she, in the book that she wrote, Self-Discovery and Inner Search, which was psychographed by a wonderful medium, uh, a Brazilian medium, Devaldo Franco. She tells us to learn to filter out bad conversations from our mind. And I think that is really important because that has helped everything I do too. When you start thinking these bad thoughts, like, oh, you know, God, that. Uncle Bob, you know, he's such a lazy, you know what, it, 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 stop, you know, just tell yourself, God bless Uncle Bob, he's going through his own trials. That's what I try to do. Anything that serves up primitive emotions, rage, jealousy, envy, hate, revenge, will cause negative emotions to permeate throughout our body. Hence, we become unbalanced and prone to nervousness, which leads to Ill, Ill health. Joanna Let's us know that vicious behavior towards vulgar and licentious conversations induces health imbalances that produces gastric and hepatic disturbances. And in essence, she's saying what she's telling us, our own failing to control ourselves leads to stomach and liver problems. Instead of letting in destructive notions, block them and immediately and only allow feelings of love and harmony. This starts the process of rewiring our brain and eventually better connects our conscience to our actions. Joanna describes the effects. This is what happens. Then the individual discerns about what one must and can do, and the individual also does not allow one to choose what pleases one, but what should not be done. Immediately after one's discovery on how to proceed, one lives calmly without the shocks of uncontrollable emotions. I can't emphasize enough the veracity of her statement. I have lived it. I know there are still hard times and hard decisions, and emotions still get the best of me occasionally. Nevertheless, when you are presented with a dilemma and you search for the correct response in your conscience, once you make the decision, all is calm. If all is not calm, then you know you rationalize the wrong decision. You can look at the feedback of your own body. This is how this is how Christ and God made us. This is why people get stressed when they when they have to they have to lie all the time or they hate all the time or they're jealous of everybody all the time. They get stressed and they have to go on some sort of medication to just kind of zone them out because they've they've made the wrong decision time and time again. And they didn't make it in consultation with that wonderful thing, conscious, that book of divine laws in your head. And even if you make a decision, we're like, oh, this is gonna cost me a lot of money, but it's the right thing to do. Th that that feeling just goes away. It's, okay, yeah, okay, well, I don't, I didn't need that money. And you just, you feel calm about it. You feel good. On the other hand, which I've done in the past, we say, well, you know, I don't want to spend that much money or I don't want to give that back or just because I didn't do a good job like I should have or something like, you know, something like that. It's, it sticks with you because you know you did not do the right thing. It's not good. You don't want that to happen. To achieve inner peace, you need to listen to your conscience. So the problem, what's the problem is behind you? Even though the consequences may still lie ahead with your decision, because you have thought them out and have accepted with gracefulness, what will happen? What will happen then, right? When you, okay, this may be, this may be harm me a bit, but I feel that's the right thing to do. 
what will happen to you? This is what Joanna says. And she and she's completely correct when she states this. Healthy thinking is a valuable commitment to generate optimism and peace. It initiates a program of right actions that gives birth to habits responsible for a second nature of one being. That is to say, another nature in, interpenetrated with one's own nature. In this direction, the course of time becomes pleasant without tiredness or irritation, and the resting time will be designated by restorative tranquility that replenishes the expenses of a wakefulness. Oh, I can attest to that. It is I mean, when you start getting that inner peace and when you start following your conscience as well as you can, no one's going to be perfect. Believe me, I know we're living in not an easy world. You will just feel so much better. You won't, and if it involved not making as much money, you won't miss that. You won't miss that material good because you won't have to have that toy to take your mind off your, you know, your self pity at the time. And as she said, healthy thinking will become such a second nature that without our knowing it, we'll have greatly improved our personality. We more carefully think through our actions in the home and society. Instead of being a catalyst of worry and gossip, we shall be a beacon of joy. When we radiate quiet and loving dignity, it comes back to us in many, many ways. So how do you get to this better way? We've been told by Joanna, you know, kind of start thinking right, right? Go through things through our conscience. And then once you begin to feel the comfort and warmth of following your conscience, your actions have more purpose and more effect upon others. Since your effort has greater impact, you naturally desire to do more. The Spirit of Emmanuel guides us in the direction. What, what, what should we follow? Once you start getting this list, how should we follow this? And this is what the Spirit of Emmanuel said. It is time you offered your cooperation and the assistance of others. And as a rule, you wish you could donate the most of yourself according to the circumstances. However, if this cannot be so, give the little that you do possess to the extent of your wishes. For it is better to offer one's very least than to deny oneself to provide assistance altogether, closing the doors to love towards others. If a challenge to humility rises ahead, you will surely entertain reason for such an enterprise for its ability to show an angelical understanding to those who appraise your spiritual progress. However, if you are not capable of implementing it, do not exempt yourself from this or that minute gesture of tolerance. There is more fairness in articulating a meager impulse of sympathy than in abandoning fraternal assistance altogether. For the latter would consequently give passage to unfettered aggression when confront, confronted by offenses and hardships, which are essentially nothing else than the manifestations of infirmities and imbalance in the behavior of others. Should you not be given the opportunity to offer a day's work to companions who are needier than you, offer them an hour to their benefit whenever possible. For it is more beneficial to spend only a few minutes in the execution of good works to, than to exempt yourself from it which would arrest the ideal and trust and goodness in our companions of experience and journey. So Emmanuel is telling us what we already know. Oh, uh, uh, Jamie Ramirez says, what about if you take a decision because friends say it is best for you, but you feel inside that you will be missing something. How do you choose connecting your mind with your spirit? That's an excellent question. So let's talk about that is look, Friends want to help, right? And friends think they know the right thing. But only we can take responsibility for our actions. And what I would, what I do these things, and we say, okay, I, you know, my friends tell me this, but I want to do this. And then I, I think about it and I meditate on it. And, and I, I really believe, and, and, and of course, people can challenge me on this. But if you say, okay, I'm going to take this decision and then just kind of rest yourself. Do you feel calm? Do you feel that, do you feel good about that decision? Do you have a, a, an emotion of, of calmness, of happiness? Or let's say your friends say, okay, you know, I kind of want this. This would be good for my career or, or whatever. But you feel a little, that little knot in your stomach. Now, again, 
this also has to be filled out. We're saying, am I not being aggressive enough? You know, am I being lazy? And do I feel good because I'm being lazy? These are all tough parts. And you, it's like you have to, is sometimes you have to like write these things down and then think about, okay, am I feeling lazy? And that's why I want to take what I think is the best path. And you have to meditate on that too. These are not simple questions. And that's why you're going to have to really think about that. And that's why, you know, so how do you choose connecting your mind with your spirit? And I think, and that is, is look, we are, you know, the spirit world wants us to have wisdom. What is wisdom? It's education and love together, right? Faith, charity, helping people. It, wisdom isn't just meaning that you can memorize big things, right? That's, that's, that's intellectual. You know, that's intellect. Wisdom is the combination of both. Now, and it's something we strive for all the time. So that's that's why when you do something in an intellectual choice, right? You have an A, B list or whatever. You also have to put it down of what is your feeling? And does it feel right? That's what our conscious does. When it doesn't feel right, your body reacts. You get a little, you know, the pit of your stomach. You feel something. You feel like, ah, I don't think that's right. And if you make a decision, so when they say you make a decision, you're not sure about, then what I would recommend, you look at the signs and signals. If you make a decision, because I've done this too, right? I've been making a decision, well, I'm not sure if that's the right one. You look at the signs and signals. And if something like this stops you, and every time you try to get to that path, it's like something's in your way. And of course, again, we, you, know, you don't want to be passive. And you keep going, but it's just there all the time. There's something in your way. The spirit world is trying to give you guidance saying, well, you know, we think you made the wrong decision. You should go here. And then you should retreat from that and try the other path that actually may be better for you and then see how that goes. And then if everything opens up for you, if everything becomes simple, right? You get a call from your aunt saying, oh yeah, I can help you with this, right? All out of the blue. It's telling you you are on the right path because we cannot we cannot minimize the effect of the spirits around us, the good spirits around us, trying to help us create the path that's best for us. So I hope that answers the question, and it, it, and it really it, it really takes a lot of self reflection and self information, right? And and of course. You know, and I, I, I get challenges like that every day. People tell me one thing or, or, or another, right? So, look, when I write about spiritism, how we are immortal souls journeying through life after life in our quest for perfection, I encounter incredulity in comments which point how stupid I must be. And sometimes I feel defensiveness rise up in me, but I try and quickly calm that down. Because after all, before I was forced to confront absolute proof of the divinity for my eyes, I would have said the same. So it's important we don't get upset with what other people. Oh, you're welcome, uh, uh, Jamie. So it's not other person's fault that I believe they believe that I'm willfully ignorant when they when I talk about spiritualism. It's not their fault. They have their point of view. They haven't lived through the same circumstances, and my rendition of my experiences must not have resonated or connected with theirs. God bless them all. A time will come when they will be ready to face the truths of their existence. My failure to reach one person won't stop me from slogging onward. I have faith and hope that my small contribution may help a few people who are open and willing to learn about the spirit realm and our part within it. When I become discouraged, I reread the message given to me and my wife at the Sierra Fraterna Spiritual Center in Rio de Janeiro, in July 2014. And the message given to my wife and I talked about bringing the light of spiritism to America. And one paragraph stands out. This is what was told to my wife and I by the spirits at the meeting. The promise is happening, happening, and that seed is planted now, first in your heart and then in your own country. And then the, the medium said that you, Brian, because my wife's from Brazil, which will be the beginning of a seed of many years in life. Don't give it up. It will not be a fight that will require little effort. Fight the good fight in close ranks marches the best soldiers of the Father. 
And I read that and I know I'm only planting seeds. I may not see the plant break through the topsoil, but it doesn't matter, right? That's not my job. I'm here to plant seeds, not to harvest. I'm not trying to perform my duty, my little contribution to the spiritual growth of earth. I am trying to perform, is it not? I realize I am like the person who planted one or two seeds in a hundred acre farm, and they would never be allowed to see even those few small plants sprout. But no matter, I have done what I have promised to do. This is what hope in action means to all of us. Fa failures will occur. They may outweigh the successes, but these are all outward signs for there are no failures inside you. You persisted in attempting to follow your conscience and your compass of love. Didn't Jesus tell his disciples, if you go through a, you know, if you go through a town and no one wants to listen to you, don't let the dust settle on, on your sandals. Just keep going, right? That's what we need to do is we keep going. And in, in the book, Our Daily Bread, the Spirit Emmanuel gives us comfort that our journey is bolstered by the spirit realm under the guidance of Christ. This is what he says. Jesus is our perennial path leading to divine love. Joining him are all the whole field spirits of goodwill, sincere adherents of the sanctifying way. From this blessed and internal path comes the seeds of the heavenly light given to ordinary men and women. It is crucial for people to be aware of this so that this treasure does not slip by unnoticed. The sanctifying seed will always appear in the midst of the most varied circumstances. Just as the generous wind freely spreads the principle of life among the plants, the invisible kindness provides all the hearts the opportunity of accessing the path of love. Nearly always the divine spark appears in ordinary daily activities, in a book, in an insignificant incident at work, or in a timely remark by a friend. We stop right there. It's like, these are the signs and signals, right? You've got to pick these up. And once you start getting sensitive to these, you'll be surprised of how you go, oh, okay, this is what this meant. You'll be surprised of how much better you feel that you'll, you'll gauge your progress. Say, okay, this is being helped along. I'll go on with what he said. If harmful weeds occupy the soil of your heart, and if you have already received the heavenly principle, cultivate it devoutly, sheltering it in the garden of your soul. The human word may fail, but the word of the Lord is imperishable. Accept it and comply with it. Because if you fail from the imperatives of the eternal life, sooner or later, the angel of affliction will visit your spirit, indicating new paths to follow. Therefore, there will always be signs, signals, and hints, and synchronicities to lighten our path. And as we move forward with faith and hope, we need to learn to discern the hidden directions. So let's talk about that. Let's dive in a little bit deeper of the signs and signals. Now, Spiritism, which is a doctrine, not a religion, presented that we incarnate multiple times. Several religions, such as Buddhism, also reveal the central fact of our immortal journey. People who are spiritualists recognize that a higher authority rules our physical universe. And as we move through life in this dimension with time to force us to move forward, that is why time was present in this dimension, the other side is constantly in touch with us. The other side, the veil, right? The spirit world. One door is closed while another is always open. We believe we made choices, but in actuality, we took the road which was laid out for us. To the casual bystander, it seemed as if our choices were natural, but in reality, circumstances were usually manipulated to lead us onto the path, which was determined before we were born. Now, let me give you an example. Growing up, I always wanted to go into the Air Force and become a pilot. That, you know, I wanted to get into the, the you know, Air Force College, et cetera. In my senior year, I suddenly needed glasses. I was, you know, I was wondering why I was out in the outfield and I was missing things. I hadn't done that before. <laughs> I need glasses. That avenue of making the military a career was just removed from the realm of possibilities. Just one of those things, as people say, looking back at it, I think it was an example of guidance. It was like, okay, no, we, we kind of, they know us so much better than we know ourselves. And they probably thought, oh, yeah, Brian, he probably wants to do this. And no, nope, that's not going to happen. So as you move forward with hope, 
learn to recognize the telltale signs. If you desire to embark on a course of action and everything falls into place, as I said before, then you're most probably on the right track. On the other hand, if you are hindered at every turn, then you may wish to evaluate your plans. Another example, my wife and I wanted to move from our house. Our present house was too small and we looked for other houses. Each time we found one we wanted it, it was either too expensive or sold before we could make a bid. So we go, okay, we can't get another house. Then we decided to buy land and build our own house. Again, we tried multiple times to purchase land. We were always too late. Finally, looking at, at the cost of buying land and the cost of building, we decided to tear down our house and build upon our own land. Everything went smooth. Our builder was wonderful, and you know how rare that is. The question is why? Why weren't we allowed to live in another lo location? Why was What was so important about this location? And I'm telling you right now, I still don't know. I don't understand it. I don't have a clue. But there, I know, I am certain that for some reason, we were forced to stay in this place. The sequence of events denying us the opportunity to move were just too overwhelming to be a mere chance. Although, I will absolutely say, it is certainly possible. Another example, the wife of a couple we, we know decided she wanted to visit John of God in Brazil. And it was all at the last moment, but then she, but she wanted to do it. She got the visa for the passport, the tickets, the hotel, everything fell in place perfectly, all at the last moments. She was meant to travel to Brazil to go to, to see John of God. What am I saying? Nothing is too small nor too trivial to be arranged by the spirit world. This is, there, there's a great passage on, on this thing is, in, one, in my books, Heaven and Below, the spirit world, uh, the spirit world and you know, all my, my whole uh, group of three books that I take from Chivao and, and different spirits talk to the Reverend Chivao. And, and he said, you know, you don't understand it. Nothing's too small for us to, to be, uh, that's part of what we want. Because when you were building your church and you decided what you wanted on top, you know, you weren't thinking you were going to have a fish or a rooster. He goes, no, we decided already you're going to have a rooster because you wanted that, you know, we wanted that, and you thought you wanted that, but we actually influenced you and and gave you this inspiration that you wanted that because you wanted to think of when the rooster called three times when Peter um, denied knowledge of Christ. He goes, you don't understand it. Every aspect of your church, and whenever there's a religious place, no matter temple, whatever, we are part of that. We make those, we help make those decisions. Symbology is very important. What goes in, and this is, it's, you know, and it goes, you don't understand. There's nothing too trivial for us to be part of. And that's got to be, that was amazing to me, right? Because before I went through my whole life changing experience, I always thought that, yes, I, you know, I believe in God, but I thought we were, you know, we were just like this this bacteria on a rock somewhere that, you know, hey, we're there, you know, whatever you guys do, just, you know, do your own thing. No, we are just so infused. And, and I, I know so many people were much, so much smarter uh, at an earlier age than I ever was. Um, I just, you know, I can only say that in embarrassment, but we are so, we are so watched and loved by God. And you think about, you know, these more mature spirits walking, looking down on us, helping guide us. You know, they must be like, you know, parents looking at a two-year-old doing all these stupid things, but just loving that that little creature no matter what. I mean, we are so lucky. You do not understand how lucky we are. And therefore, this is the central truth, right, is that the spirit world arranges many events that happen to us, right? Our trials, tribulations are there for, for us to change our character. And that's why hope and action, just keep moving forward. Now, other experiences there, just because we need to broaden experiences, not everything is as a part of atonement. Just But know that we are much more watched, guided, and analyzed than most of us realize. Don't worry about your privacy. You have no privacy. Everything, your thoughts, everything is in the book. Everything's recorded. 
Therefore, don't worry about it, right? There's nothing you can do about it. Go forth in the understanding that our mentors are always ready to lend you a helping hand. They are at your call when events seem to be overpowering and impossible to solve. Your guardian angel is ever vigilant on your behalf. Remember, too, no trial that you're given by the spirit world is meant that you cannot somehow come out of it better. There's no, they don't punish you to punish you. You are given these things to help yourself grow and at some day become a perfect spirit. Right? The spirit realm requires all the agents of good amassed on our planet to push humanity. And we're part of that one small step closer to a higher level. One little tiny grain of sand, one little small step to a place where the earth will truly be a paradise. And your assistance is greatly appreciated because one day we will go from a planet of atonement to a planet of regeneration. You won't have, you won't have uh, dramatic episodes in your life there. You'll have mostly learn, right? You'll learn, you'll talk to people, you'll have be people like you. You won't worry about crime. You won't worry about losing your job. Those things will not be part of it because you won't need that anymore because you won't need to modify your basic character. You'll probably just grow, but you'll have a good foundation and you'll grow that with more experience as you go on. So anyway, I want to thank everyone for our talk tonight. I want to, again, please, please, if you're interested, get my book, How to Live Inner Peace Through Spiritism, and share this, share this, and also you can get this in PDF, Alan Kardec's The Spirit's Book. That's the headwaters of everything. He codified, you know, that book. Share this, this um, uh, live stream on Kardec Radio with other Facebook sites or whatever. Tell people about the, on my YouTube channel. I know that there's people out there that are helping, talking to other people about spiritism. If you need any help, Anyway, I, we're always there to help, and I want to thank everyone for a wonderful night, and God bless everybody. God bless.